What's going on, everybody out there in podcast land? How are you tonight? Hello, my darlings. Hello, everybody. How's everyone doing tonight? I hope everyone is well. I hope everyone is well. I hope I hope you guys are doing well as well. Say well really? again, motherfucker. <laughs> well, 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 well. Say it again. Oh, uh, well. Welcome to another <laughs> exciting installment of uh, your favorite podcast episode. That's or your favorite podcast, Cultivation Conversation. I'm Captain Autoflower. I am the real green monster. And I'm Girl Go Grow, otherwise known as G3. Welcome back, everyone. It's, uh, the conversation begins again. Yet another variety of yet unknown topics i mean you guys have any clue what we're going to talk about tonight because i sure as hell don't no yeah, outlines no scripts no nothing tonight we're freewheeling yeah we well, can just like q a stuff we can do whatever <laughs> nice Figure it out. how's it out there in banishment land cap oh it's it's very peaceful i'm enjoying my exile i gotta say i'm like i'm i'm starting to uh appreciate how how nice and quiet it is out here you know i just yeah. i can focus on just what i'm doing you know it's not about it's not about uh making content so much it's just about like growing growing the plants yeah like doing, living your life like, there's something more really personal relationship with them yeah that's awesome get into so. it yeah, we're getting intimate, exactly. Yeah, do some upskirt yeah. shots. Some people would argue that it's like you enhance the intimacy by making it more of like a public voyeurism type of like an, an exhibitionism mentality, but I'm I'm not I'm not kinky like that, I guess. Oh, I just... My girls like to show off. <laughs> <laughs> I just like taking them uh taking them out on the tent and uh and just just spinning them around in the attic, you know, like plucking a couple yeah. of those bottom leaves off, just giving them the once over, telling them how pretty they look. You play like work working girl when you're up there, just like, well, girls just want to have fun. <laughs> no, it's more more like uh, um, what's that like saxophone uh, um, and the George Michael song that like end, <laughs> uh, endless whisper. Didn't he get caught That's like uh, yeah. careless? Didn't he get caught like beating off the fucking bathroom? <laughs> I think he did. He did. Yeah. yeah. Where it was like, yeah, I I don't know the sp specifics of it, but more more or less, man. Hey, more or yeah. less. Everybody's gonna get one out sometimes, but I mean, Jesus Christ, dude, what the fuck? In a public <laughs> bathroom? Like, I think it was at like a rest stop or something, wasn't it? I don't know. Like, I I don't remember. I just I, I, I it was over twenty years ago. It was a long time ago. Yeah. Or whatever. Fuck him. Well, so uh, yeah, right. Fuck him. Fuck him. Um. So what are you smoking on a night? What you got? Got some cherry smash by Inhouse Genetics. Ooh. Mm. Nice. Is it taste like cherry? It does. It's very rotten cherry tasting. Um. Ooh. The exhale is a little bit different. I've never found a cherry strain that really. Yeah. Neither have I. When like, when uh does cherries but, for me. When I came across it, I had to have a cut. Uh, shout out to Matt's Nuggets. He hooked me up with a cut. And um, nice. I kept it around for a while. I, I recently just parted ways. So I grew out a bunch of times. Had my fill. Not the biggest yielding plant in the world. So, uh, you know, she was good while she lasted. But uh, I gave the cut to a friend. So hopefully he'll, he holds on to it. He said he would. But I don't have it anymore. She's gone. Bad. It happens, man, you know? Yeah, you gotta make room in the stable for new shit. I got a bunch of joint custody shit um, that Hell I'm getting, yeah. ready to, getting ready to take some cuts from. Um, you know, so, got a lot of stuff going on. Gotta make room in the stable for, for new jacks. Well, I'm I'm seeing in the chat now, I think, like, we, we were uh, we were talking about a dead person a little bit earlier, like like a minute ago. From the, I think I think George Michael uh, has passed from this world. So I'd oh. just like to say, like, even though you know, fuck him, but like, rest in peace at the same time. Yeah, yeah. go fuck yourself. <laughs> rest in peace. Rest, uh, rest in, in the peace afterlife. You know, go go f yourself yeah. in the afterlife, but also rest in peace. Yeah. Um, 
both can apply. But yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Just yeah. had to throw that out there. Right. Um, you know, we get live time, live real time updates, guys. I don't. I can... didn't get the chat up tonight, so I'm not going to have the pleasure of seeing that. <laughs> kind of last minute, forgot to. So well, uh, thanks, Charles. Right. Charles Budkowski, a little shout out to you, man. Thanks. Yeah. Um, how Very about you? Very active G3? member on the Discord. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he's a good dude. Well, what about you, G three? What you got? In that bomb. Finger smile. Yeah, back to my favorites. There you go. Hey. So I have a question for people or you guys. Any of you guys use hemp wicks? Because I have this raw mm -hmm. one and I it smolders <clears throat> for like <laughs> 30 seconds after hey. it gets blown out. And that's a problem. Have so, you ever used hemp wick previously? No. I mean they, they yeah, all like they all, they all do, do it. Like I had yes. the last one I used was like some no name brand and it didn't smolder like this. This is mm. like if it's next to something, it'll light it on fire. And I'm too careless to be having that happen. So Yeah, I mean I need to use wick or I need to not use hemp anymore. Just huff the butane. It's an extra side benefit. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. It's not good for you. <laughs> Just the butane. I need to will keep my lungs high. healthy. This yeah. is this is how I you know, obtain G3, my G3. medicine is through my lungs. I, I That's exactly it. the same. But yeah. Like, fucking real here. We're putting smoke into our lungs. Right. A little tiny flash of butane. Like you're only just light. Like you're not as long. I see people they hold well, the thing. They in all fairness, the whole time. Well, I light okay. it till it gets like a good cherry to it, and then. I mean, I, listen. Really dumb, I have thanks. a friend who is deathly allergic to it. Like. I, if he'll let me, I'll show some pictures on the next show. That's terrible. I took, it oh, took them a year and a half to figure this out. But if somebody lit a joint with a lighter, it would affect him. And I didn't believe it at first. I kind of was like, dude, let's be real. It's got to be something Wait, else. Wait, you said if somebody lit one, like, near him? or No, if somebody... like, so if we're in a circle, right? Yeah. So when, when this guy comes over, um, everybody has to put their lighter on the table. Like, because it's it's happened so many fucking times that, like, the joint goes out, somebody will light it, and then the, a day and a half later, his face is, it looks like something out of a cartoon. And I didn't believe it at first. I really didn't. I thought, I was like, come on, dude, it's gotta be something else. He's like, nope, it's the butane. It's confirmed by his doctor. No way. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I feel for him that oh, way. And, and damn, I actually, I've gotten him twice. I've gotten him twice with it. And, uh, the first time was because I just didn't believe him. I thought it was bullshit. And then the second time was just, just a straight accident. You're like, Dude, that's you're, so you're allergic up. to peanuts, you fucking liar. No. <laughs> like, peanut that allergies, I, like, peanut that. allergy, I could fucking <laughs> believe that. Meanwhile, the guy's like... <laughs> <laughs> peanut allergy, I could fucking believe, but... The, well, you know, I know. You, uh, <laughs> I can see so, it. What, he 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 couldn't handle the butane terps, little little butane terps. Apparently not. You know, yeah, I don't want those butane your bowl. terps either. Just like I wear a respirator when I mix my soil, I don't want those dirt terps. I don't get want. An, get an electric lighter. Well, Have you seen those? an electric lighter. Yes. Yep. Yes. Um, those might might work. I, I mean, honestly, I think G three is on. Like she has a point. Like butane. Although you're not inhaling a large amount of it per bong rip, like it's like bong rips, you it's, take it's a, a little day. bit. It's it's take more than it's more than zero butane that you are inhaling mm -hmm. per bong rip, and then uh, yeah, accumulated over the course of days, weeks, months, years. I mean, I don't know how many bong rips you guys take a day, but like I'm probably in like the 30s or 40s. But like, yeah, I I'm, consider I'm, myself I'm, in like the reckless range. So like, <laughs> you know, Reck I like that reckless range. <laughs> that's like, yeah, yeah, and that's, that's especially reckless that's when you consider how much butane you're inhaling per right. per bong rip. Right. So like, cheers. Yeah, so somebody <laughs> there you needs go. to make some non-smoldering. Suck down that butane. Um, or some other way to do it. I like, think like it's my bowl a, might a taser. A, I don't know. A brand thing. Yeah, maybe a taser would work, <laughs> right? Or uh, use one of these guys, these bad boys. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, I've heard so many people like, "Don't use those. You're absolutely torching your terps," which is probably true. But 
well literally torching your turf yeah just like um yeah i don't use this for them. long at all no, but um but... Oh, for dabs, you know yeah. gotta be a yeah, better for... option though now try, I, I have try used... a good electric lighter i'll have to find one i don't I, I... know if i've ever used an electric lighter in my entire life really they've been yeah. around for a long time they're, they're kind of expensive and uh they're notorious for for dying like at the worst possible moment because they're rechargeable so um oh, all right we'll have to give it a give it a whirl i have used the hemp wicks and i mean they serve their purpose where for like you're not sucking any butane and you don't get any butane terps which honestly sometimes i can taste maybe i'm crazy no, no, you can but, taste it 100 percent if you hold the lighter there too long and you inhale 100 percent. so maybe it. i'm crazy but like you know if i'm enjoying the man the the very last of my my strawberry milk and cookies oh no the very last of it if, like when i'm you know enjoying a very terpy kind of smoke like that i think it, it's uh it's a pretty good idea actually but yeah you you don't want one that smolders like you said that's right. especially with fire cats hazard. and stuff cats and I've, kids I've honestly and... only used it maybe a handful of times and as far as I can remember they all smoldered at least a little bit that's not well, I guess you'll just have to like do a little all right the search continues pinch a lick and pinch yeah I do do that so I like well that's easy to... you just like hold yeah. it <laughs> Do a licking pinch on uh, on candles, not on on your friends. That's that's my advice. <laughs> Sounds like a like a personal I guess problem. It depends on how good of a friend. Uh, yeah, you are. back in and back in '97, I licked and pinched this motherfucker, and it just didn't <laughs> didn't work out. It ended in a bar fight. Just wasn't pretty, you know. People just don't like wet willies and uh, being. Licked and pinched when when they're drinking at a bar. That's what, it, Sally's. what can you do? But uh, <laughs> so, oh man, yeah, it's gonna be one of those kinds of shows, guys. Can you tell? Can you tell? But um, so I wanted to talk a little bit tonight because I, I got the, the 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 drying tent set up. I'm I chopped eight plants allegedly. How long did that and, take you? Longer Allegedly than I'd a couple like hours to admit. Allegedly. Yeah, I mean, so there they were four of them were huge. Like and and mind you, I have to take them from the attic down one flight, down two flights, down three flights of stairs into the basement where the drying tent is located. So Allegedly. Al allegedly. Exactly. And the meat I'm hooks, not... allegedly. Um but yeah, no, they, so I, I was doing them one at a time and it took, it took very, like it took longer than I'd like to admit, probably two hours to chop and hang eight plants. Huh. That sounds um, about right. Hang... Knowing the size of your house, that sounds about right. Yeah. Do you hang and as I, full plants? Yes. Hang as full plants. And, and I just do like the coat hanger method where like you just take like a, one of the big side branches and like mm -hmm. just separate that and then thread the coat hanger through it so it like you can hang the whole plant from yep. the coat hanger um which it's it takes t teamwork like my wife is so helpful when i do this kind of stuff like i can't do it by myself you know mm. especially like chopping the plants too because they would just like like timber and fall on top of one another because i'm using you know big cindy loppers up there it's a two-handed exercise so she's got to hold the stalk while I chop, and then, and then of course we got to do like a couple pictures. I mean, you know, I'm I don't have the Instagram, but I still have to like it's as is tradition when I chop my plants. I have to hang them upside down in like a slav squat kind of pose, and then I like make them twerk like this. We make them twerk, and. uh it's you know slow mo nice. I like that. I remember cool that. I yeah. posted that the other day. It was cool. Yeah. The slow mo one I dug that. We make them twerk, and uh, yeah. that's as is tradition. It just has to, you know. I don't yeah. know when that started or why. It's just customary tradition, all that stuff. I I don't can't can't diff can't can't uh you know get away from 
the stuff you uh <laughs> the traditions i guess i don't know man so uh i got the eight plants down in the drying tent it's, it's a three by three it's like it's a full house you know so um i'm doing a couple things slightly differently not not so much just to like mitigate the chance of bud rot pm like all the you know disastrous things that could possibly happen when you jam eight freshly chopped plants in a three by three um Yikes. how yeah, did you little, even fit them scary. in there are they multi-tiered yeah so you have to you have like it was funny like mac in the discord was saying the same thing uh he's hey, that's not gonna fit but like <laughs> You have to know the relative sizes of the plants involved. Like the, the four photo periods were big, like four foot, four and a half feet tall each. You know, they're big plants. Uh, and then the, the autos were like these little mini me autos. They're cute, you know, like two feet tall. So they fit it, the autos fit in the gaps, like in like the upper deck of mm -hmm. the tent. You know what I mean? While like gotcha. down on the bottom layer, that's where the photos are doing their thing. So like, there's not a single plant touching another single plant. I made, I made very, you know, made sure about that. Um, and I am, I got two fans, okay? Not pointed at the plants, but they're in the tent, just pointed at the floor, kind of like at each other, at a, at a tent wall, you know? I don't want any of that breeze even being like deflected up and hitting the plants directly in any way. Mm -hmm. It's just to keep the air moving underneath. I don't know. That's generally how I do it. I yeah. have a couple of fans at the bottom moving air, and then I keep my AC Infinity fan or wherever I'm using for extraction at a, mm -hmm. at a one. I have it always on, so yeah. it's just gotcha. moving air. So that's that's kind of another thing I'm doing a little differently too is I am not keeping the fan on a constant speed of one. I am using the parameters of the auto exhaust feature of, of the AC AC Infinity. But but like in most of like because of the environment right now, it's kind of ideal for drying like the the basement's like 60 65 degrees 50 percent humidity you know so i do have the air conditioning still pumping into that drying tent um on low it just doesn't need that much but it is like it's keeping it at 60 degrees right where i want it it's really just the the humidity that i'm like playing with and i'm letting the plants kind of like I'm letting the humidity fill up in the tent, right? So most of the time, the exhaust fan is not on. I don't want it on. Like the minimum, I think that the thing that I changed is the, the minimum threshold. Minimum humidity right now. I set it all the way up to like, um, oh, I'm sorry. Now I'm, I'm getting confused because like the, the threshold thing, man, no one uses their exhaust fan correctly because everyone's a fucking idiot, right? I, I, I'm the same way. I don't have the fan on unless the humidity is at 60%. That's the only way I can, can say it to you. Like there is no minimum threshold that it hits and triggers for a minimum. I don't want that. Like I don't, I don't want the fan on at all unless the humidity spikes to like 65. That's where I have it set. And then I, it brings in that 50% humidity. I would at least try to get air out of there a couple times a day. You want to get that air out. Yeah. Um, in there yeah i mean yeah. why why just i'm thinking you know, it's just why. good to get the air exchange moving you don't want shit to build up you know like um that's just but what's, what's building up like if they're dead plants right. and it's just gonna, moisture you, you, that i I want to build up to keep it at 60 percent. you still want to get old air out and, and new air in because it's, it's just the same air sitting there, like getting circulated over and over and over again. I just don't it doesn't sound like a good idea to me. I mean, At least like, if, I, what I what I, I what I would do if because if it's not having to kick on much, I would use one of those shitty timers like Pushman timers, 
and just have it kick on for like 15 minutes at least once a day just to get the air out and yeah, I mean, get some new air in. So it it is like it does get triggered because oh, the then, plants then you're good. are off plants are off gassing humidity. So you're moisture. using that you're using that to keep your humidity at 60% is what you're Yeah, doing. exactly. Yeah. Like the, I'm just That's using right. the plant's own like yeah. generated moisture to keep the the moisture in the tent where I want it and if it goes above that I exhaust the air and bring in 50% humidity air. Now I get a better grasp of what's going on, and you're. I know it's Mm -hmm. like it's a simple thing. I I, like I don't really know how to explain these things. Sometimes it's just like you know. I I hear. um, So it's tough. Just you just have it set at sixty percent, and that's when it kicks on. Yeah, yeah. I kick it kicks on at sixty percent, and really it doesn't do any. um, Like I'm not worried in this uh, instance of drying about my temperatures at all because it's going to be 60 degrees pretty much i don't want the fan to trigger at all unless the humidity goes above where i want that's 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 my strategy and when when like um i notice like when when i go in there let's say because i chop the plants saturday i go in there next saturday this this coming saturday and i i notice like all right you know the the humidity in the tent isn't even at 60 right now. It's like at 58, 57%, 56, you know? I let that's, it roll. Well, see, but that's what, I, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to keep, keep drying, but I'm going to, like, transfer then into, um, like, plastic tubs. Yeah. You, you know, right a s- smaller space to allow the moisture and the plants to fill up then. So like, it's just, it's a tiered drying system where like you're allowing the plants to fill up their environment with their own moisture. And when they're like almost out of moisture, you transfer them into a smaller space. So like they can get that humidity up there and then you can keep them in that plastic tote indefinitely. Like we've talked about and just yeah. wait. Yeah, it's till... like reverse transplanting. Yeah, instead yeah. of starting in a solo cup and going up to like a five gallon you know you're starting in a drying tent and going down to a mason jar so it's good or that you brought bag or whatever it's good that you brought this up tonight really because i mean we're in harvest season for a lot of people doing yep. the outdoor grow i'm still trying to push mine i was there today taking a look at them they look fucking amazing i'll have a video up oh yeah soon, but they're Are they i'm gl- like yeah, they're really starting to fill out like that that last couple of weeks when they bulk on. Um that's why like I cringe when I see people harvesting up here in the northeast. Like, dude, there's just no way your shit's finished. Just let it finish. Mm. Like, oh, it's so let cold. It ride. It's cold. Well, yeah, it's cold. That's it, they'll be fine. They're like they're not going to die. And even if they did die, you harvest them and cut them down. Like you're not you know what I mean? I know People are worried about like bud rot and stuff like that, but cutting your plants down early just defeats the whole fucking purpose. You're not really gonna get stoned off the stuff, like not well anyway. It's gonna be a racy high, and you've severely uh, cut down on your weight. So, I mean, I get it. Some people had to harvest. Like I, dude, up here in the northeast, it's a fucking bitch. It's a bitch growing outdoors, even with my setup, man. It's a bitch. There's a people lot worry. of fucking shit. People worry about the bud rot. I go in there with a fucking leaf blower every morning and blow off the plants with the, from the dew. <laughs> yeah. That's love. Yeah, that, that is, right? It is. So, gotta be done. Oh. Uh, yeah. Have, this mean, is kind of like a high risk thing to like eat plants and changing up your drying situation. I'm assuming that you're going to want to use that trim bag, right? Yeah, to yeah. Get them. Oh, so yeah, you have they, to have that like I don't Perfect trim no more. <laughs> level of dry. You're like, let's change all you the kind of do. You have to like. It's not about over drying, okay? Because I would never do such a thing. Like you know, it's criminal. I, the perfect <laughs> time to. It is criminal. Like really, but I want to use the trim bag because I hate trimming. Like and so, but you do have to have like the outside of your bud slightly crispy okay it's it needs to be a little bit crispy so like you know again like if i if they spend a week to 10 days in the tent upside down 
as whole plants hanging from the meat hooks. You know, then they'll spend another... I mean, shit, last time I did this, I, I let the plants... When I put them in the tubs, okay, like, especially with four and a half foot plants, they're not... The tubs aren't big enough. You got to kind of like break the plants down at that point, branch by branch. Yeah, yeah, that's how you're supposed even, to do it. Yeah, cut mm -hmm. the branches in half. I don't buck the branches. You know what I mean? No, Where like I usually take don't either. The buds off at that point. Yep. I don't do that. No. Um, that's like when I when I put them in the trim bag or when I trim, like that's when I buck them. Okay. And yep. it's usually after they're going to spend like two, probably three weeks in the tote. Like last time. I mean, I don't have like, I just wait till I have time to get to them. That's the beauty of this system, right? Is you can like, they're going to stay in this tote and the, the tote humidity is going to be 60 degrees on the dot, a 60% humidity. Like I, I guarantee it. Um, and I'm going to like check on them every day and like do a little burping, you know, air exchange, um, rotate and, those branches a little bit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You could do that. Um, yeah. and I, last time even I did it, I had like, um, I used, what's it called? Um, like wax paper or like yeah. parchment paper. Yeah. Not wax. I just paper. cut. Yeah. Not wax paper. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen so parchment. many people make that mistake paper. with rosin. Uh, yeah, don't they use wax they, paper. Oh, dude, look at this rosin. It's fucking beautiful. I'm like, wow, that looks great. And then I look mm. at the paper and I'm like, dude, do you use it's wax paper, yeah. man? Not, they're, they're not the same thing. But no, no, parchment paper in between the layers of like, you know, keeping how do I know which plant's which at that point? If they're all in a tote. I just did yeah. layers of parchment paper. And oh, it seemed, seemed to work just fine. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, so I'll, after like two, three weeks in the tote, I'll get to them, throw them in the trim bag, um, maybe even, you know, take some of the top buds and actually hand trim, like some of the ones I really want to look nice. But for the most part, the trim bag did great. As long as, as long as, like I think keeping them for an extended period in the tote really did help because by that point, it was kind of like, the same thing happening that I noticed in the tent where like the humidity wasn't quite getting back up to 60%, you know? So after like two weeks in the tote, when I would do a, a burp and check on them, I'd be like, oh, the, you know, hygrometer says 56%, 55%. So at that point, they're like just dry enough to buck them, put them in the trim bag, give them a couple spins, you know, and make the makes shit that, like, out of them. It doesn't, it doesn't beat the shit out of them at all. So it does. Your, your buds are way, way more uh, able to take a beating than you think. I'm right? sure they are. I just <laughs> can't. Something that could help you a little bit with getting that moisture level right is, uh, uh, I've mentioned it before, a wood moisture meter. Yep. Yep. Um, um, I've heard people so do that. I usually aim for about 10% before I bucket my shit up with the moisture meter i think with the trim bag maybe i don't know 12 percent if i had to guess would be a good moisture content and people associate that with relative humidity in a jar or whatever it's not the same thing so um yeah give it a shot they're not that expensive i think 30 or 40 bucks you can get a decent yeah, one i yeah, mean yeah. that was like two years ago when i bought mine so it's probably 100 now thanks corona oh, pan attacks uh, and, and all that stuff yeah, yeah. supply chain issues but <laughs> uh yeah, it's, I, I just think it's a great system, like, because ain't nobody got time to, like, let the drying the process run your life. Because really, that's how it felt before I came upon this system. Even more so than with the growing, the drying and getting everything, like, you got to do it on the day that the humidity is at 60 degrees, or, or if it's below, like, it's too dry, if it's you know, above too wet still, like the drying process, like I've said before, can be scary, but like this system is kind of foolproof. Any idiot can do it, including myself. And, uh, it doesn't, you know, you don't let the, the dry, like run your life. I'm just going to get to them when I get to them. And that's, what's great about it. Even if you grow, you know, 
two dozen plants outside in a greenhouse like some people I know, allegedly. <laughs> you know? Hey, there's only 12 plants in that greenhouse. Okay, all right. So just, just a dozen. All right. Like, le- legit 12 fully yeah, legal girls just, mass compliant. They're just huge, though. They're they're huge. Yeah. Yep. Well, so, I mean, you know... You, and you're probably going to employ a very similar system of drying, if I'm not mistaken, to like, you know, get to all those plants when you have time to do them, right? Well, I do things a little differently. I'll just keep it in the 60-60 environment um, so I'm fucking ready. So I, I, the way I set up my dry rooms is I'll have a dehumidifier, a humidifier, and an air conditioner all battling, keeping things at the yeah at Yeah, the right see, I'm... I'm my dry room ain't that sophisticated. So like I am relying on the plants to provide their own moisture. So it, it is still for me, it's, it's a little bit about timing and knowing. Generally speaking, you know, the first four or five days, you're not going to worry about adding any moisture anyway. Like you're worrying about getting yeah, it out. So exactly. Um, Cause without like dehumidification or some sort of exhaust to get the, like even in a big dry room, 12 plants, you, that shit will get to 90% humidity. Oh, yeah. real quick yeah but only in the beginning you know couple first couple days of the dry by like a week in it's once you notice that like the plants themselves don't provide enough moisture to fill up that space that's when it's time to transfer them either to a smaller space eat or add moisture with the uh, uh, humidifier to the environment you know which you could do i suppose and just keep them right in the tent. You got to get you one of those fogger setups. You'll love yeah, that. Yeah. Because be nice. I know what you're saying. Like battling fucking killing a humidifier is just a motherfucker. They take, I mean, I they fucking, they just chug through water. Yep. And then like, yeah, you fill it. You come back six hours later and it's like, what the fuck? It's, it's off because it's empty. It just and... drive me fucking nuts. If, if you're using, you know, something like this. Hold on. I will. I gotta unplug it from the wall first. Oh my lord! <laughs> the shit you get go. live on the show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Captain showing his junk on camera. Woo-hoo. Yeah, literally. But like this, this is not a uh, a tool made for a grow or a grower. <laughs> this is a tool for like a like a baby with a cough. Like, <laughs> right. This is. Yeah. So One AC Infinity do... just dropped a <laughs> humidifier. Of course they did. Those guys release yep. a new product all the time. It's fucking they unreal. Do. I, I have no idea how that. it is. <laughs> what you I want to work for their R&D department. <laughs> AC Infinity right. humidifiers now? Yep. Wait, so... Yep. Does, I'm less interested in humidifiers. Does it to my I'm controller 69? Oh. It does. It goes with it. It <sighs> works with it. All right. All right. I mean, like... How many, like, I, I'm going to have to take a look, honestly, because, like, fucking humidifiers that, like, you have to choose from at, at Target, Walmart, like, that's where I got this thing, you know, it's terrible. You know it would make terrible. that thing a lot cooler? A little ink bird, connect that <laughs> shit to a probe, and then it turns on when it needs to, fuck, and you crank it that, di- you crank that dial up all the way, um, and you yeah. can actually get it to last a while, because, dude... I fucking hate trying to dial in humidity with a fucking knob. There's no value there. Like, what is one, two, oh, three, know. four, five? I know, I know, I know. So, like, this this is the, like, low grade. You know, this is this is what you're talking about, like a knob. Yeah. And it, yeah, like, it's. I, I don't know what this setting is as opposed to this. Exactly. Like, really. It, it, and it, yeah. it just, I don't know. So, yeah, no, it. I could put something like that in the dry tent. Okay. With an ink and bird, and then you'd with, be good. Yeah, with an or even just put it on like a very low setting, just to provide a little bit of moisture. Okay. No, I did have a humidifier in there that was a little bit more advanced than that one, and it had like um, a digital thermostat on the unit itself, right? So you yep. can like set it. It only comes on when it, the humidity is below the level you set it at, right? So you put it at 60% and it just fires every time it needs to when it's at like 58, 56%, it just goes on for a little bit. Worked fine, but the thing fucking broke because 
just humidifiers not made to be in a grow. I like, I don't know. Maybe it, who knows? I was going to say it didn't like the moisture. Like it wasn't, uh, what, what's the waterproof rating for like grow yeah. equipment? Yeah, I have definitely of flooded cheap... the bottom of mine multiple like, times. You would, but you would think a humidifier would be able to work with moisture in you, the environment, right? You yeah. would think, Seriously. but <laughs> who knows? <laughs> What is it like IP IP sixty sixty five or something? There's so many different ratings. You have IPX, IP sixty seven, IP sixty six, but it all based it's based on how uh how waterproof they really are, you know. Like IP sixty five is your basic standard waterproof rating. They go like X like IPX rating is gotcha. higher. Yeah. Gotcha. Now, now I one. granted, okay, granted, I I am like I don't clean my Target special humidifiers or like do anything special with the water that I put in them. It's tap water, like straight straight from the tap, and so you know that that's probably contributing a little bit to like equipment failure. I imagine like you do get a little bit of like calcium buildup if you have uh you, you do. Yeah. Like, you they recommend distilled water, but you can certainly use distilled what, water. What's I ironic mean. is some de some humidifiers won't work with distilled water. They need some sort of mineral content. Like I've had oh, some where really like, uh, yeah, like even in the directions if you look, they'll tell you to add a pinch of salt if it's not hmm. working. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Now I mean, don't they sell like some kind of for like aquariums that'll get rid of uh, like calcium, a little bit of calcium, like hard. It get it takes care of hard water issues for like amphibians if you keep them as pets. Yeah, RO water. Yeah, well, I mean, there's like drops I think that yeah. you can use to take care of that. I don't know if that might work for you know. I would just use your um your dehumidifier on... water. Yeah, well, exactly. That's that is what I tend to do a lot of times. Is is I use, I yeah, dehumidifier water to fill the humidifiers. Yeah. Um, you know, but I, I don't worry too much about it. Like, so the problem is, I saw Mac. He's wondering, like, the humidifier just it could, the, there's no electric. Electric doesn't doesn't operate. So it's not even turning on. Like, it's not. I don't think cleaning it would work, but no, no. If it's not I, turning on, I suppose 100%. I could could try. But it no, does no. seem like some sort of an electrical failure, which it's probably the logic board itself, like something fried. Like you should, you'd be cr like surprised, like how bad a quality. Like if you take some of this cheap Chinese shit apart and you look at the boards and you see the solder joints, you'd be fucking. You don't even have to know anything about soldering to know that, like, wow, this is just poor craftsmanship um yeah and all, yeah. all it takes is one solder joint to break like you know the right one or the wrong one depending on how you look at it and the whole mm. thing won't won't turn on so well yeah it's just it's just not not turning on non-functional did, did you try yelling at it i told it to get its shit together and it didn't, <laughs> it didn't do work anything i know unbelievable just, that's you know. when you know listen i won't hit a woman but i'll smack a bitch did you try fucking hitting that thing or what <laughs> shake it no but i i shook it really hard yeah yeah you shake yeah shake it took you know? it really get hard. your fucking shit together <laughs> yeah. yeah this is right this is Jeff Bezos. Dear, this is not Serious. casper this is not. It's Casper. not. No. Oh, he's a big old chunky Believe boy. Believe it or not, this is not Casper. Wow, this is Shadow. Little... Hi, Shadow. She's twelve years old. You believe that? Twelve wow. years old. Say what's up. Hey, pretty girl. Yeah. Oh. We love our black cats, man. Yeah, and little said, shadows. Um, Creatures of the void. <laughs> love them. Yeah, right. They, they, dude, they are like. Anytime, so when I was chopping the plants, when they're like, they're, they're, they were just trying their hardest to like jump in the middle of the plants, to mm -hmm. climb the plants, to, yeah, chew on the leaves. Um, oh, the leaves. What is it with cats and yeah. cannabis leaves? It, I swear to God, that, it's, it's full on guerrilla warfare when I open my tent. I believe it's in the same, like, whatever 
genome or some genome. shit as catnip. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think it, I think you were right, actually. Yeah. Dude, you ever oh. try to smoke catnip as a kid? Yep. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Oh, no. <laughs> I did too. I did yeah. too. Hundred no, percent. I did not. One hundred percent. I think I was like eleven or twelve. I don't give a fuck. Uh huh. I was at like my buddy's house at a sleepover, and like, yeah. you know, we found catnip in a little. It looked like a little dime bag. I believe there are small amounts of THC and catnip. I could be wrong on that. Really? Yeah. Could be wrong. On it. Now I, have I don't know. I, I I didn't get high at all. So no, no, you you, you won't. I mean, <laughs> there's small there's small amounts of THC and hemp. You're not going to get high. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. But if you smoke enough hemp. Yeah, you'll really? fucking you'll get lung cancer before you really? get high. It's like if you drink enough non-alcoholic beers. Yeah, there is technically alcohol in those. You, you know, will get drunk eventually. Near, near beers. I think you'd probably mess up your hydration level. Something awful. Yeah. Like it yeah, would take some like, serious electrolytes to come back from yeah. that. <laughs> I think your bladder would explode before you could get drunk off of it at all. Um. Yeah, it's just just my theory, not not scientific at all. Um, but man, monster, I'm, I gotta say, you missed your fucking segue, dude. Yeah, you like literally said electricity. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I've been taking a lot of bong hits today, and I did take 150 milligrams of edibles before the show. It's been a long day, so yeah, let's let's talk. Let's um, talk about electricity. There was one thing we knew we wanted to get into, mm. and that was it. Yeah. Sorry, uh, maybe I'll take another bong in and remember. It's like he's just we're not professionals here, guys. But no, that's the whole fucking point. That's what makes the show the show. You know, we just kind of <laughs> wing shit and fucking make it happen. But um, yeah. So I, I posted about this on Instagram. I don't know if people can see that receptacle on the hut side. You can see that little char burnt. So so scenario where the homeowner did his own wiring and rocket brain things to save i think it was like a difference of 17 dollars between the, the wiring and uh 17 dollars almost cost him his fucking house so yeah yep. oh my god yeah, wait and, let me it, see it again let me see it again and what so, was plugged into that uh, it's a shitload of stuff so basically the the crux of it, i think it was like close to like 17 18 amps i don't even fucking remember but okay. the, the 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 problem there was is he did everything almost the right way like it's a 15 amp receptacle he used 15 you know a 14 gauge wire which is appropriate for 15 amps uh, but then tied it to a 20 amp breaker now the the problem with that is the way most breakers work is they trip on heat right so if you don't give that breaker knows what temperature it's supposed to pop at 16 17 amps isn't going to do it right it's a 20 amp breaker but 16 17 amps on 14 gauge wire on a 15 amp receptacle um, that's what happens it starts to melt right before, before it can pop not to mention that this is literally like a 97 cent receptacle it's the cheapest one you can buy when you go to Home Depot and you look at receptacles, you'll they range from like a buck to like three or four bucks. I always say just go in the middle, you know, the ones for like two bucks. They make a fucking difference. I, I mean, you can just you can take them apart, you can look at the quality inside, and you can see, you know, you are getting what you pay for generally with these things. The crux of the story is just don't do your own electrical work if you don't know what you're doing. Now I get shit a lot from people because they're like, You're not a licensed electrician, you're fucking goddamn right I'm not um you know but i know what i'm doing you know right what you're doing yeah. and and <laughs> there, there's a difference in it so you you know i'm not telling people not to diy shit quite the contrary diy all you fucking want um but just know what you're doing don't try to rocket shit. dude when Be i was smart. a kid when i was a kid i did something very similar stupid in my car right i had a sub and an amp hooked up i was like 17 years old the fuse kept popping it was like a 15 amp fuse I threw a 25 amp in there, and guess what? It didn't pop anymore, but it almost caught my car on fire. I yes. literally smelt the burning. So that's what that's what basically what will happen, right? So it's the it's the same equivalent. That's you know? so, okay, so I, I'm I'm sorry. Okay, good. I was gonna say, as a grower, then knowing 
save myself, knowing nothing basically about what's coming in or going out of my house or how do I know, how does any other grower know that what they have plugged into their outlets is safe? That's a great question, actually, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad you asked. There's a device called the Kilowatt. They're socks. They're like 30 bucks now. I said 20 on the video, but they used to be like 15 bucks. It's called the Kilowatt, K-I-L-O dash A dash Watt, W-A-T-T. Um, and there's cheaper ones too. Uh, oh, wow. they, they, they're about you know 20 bucks on Amazon. They're just the same, but you plug this, you plug, you would plug that device, the kilowatt into your receptacle. Okay. And then you plug in what you want to see how much power is drawing to that device. And there's functions that will tell you Watts. It'll tell you amps, kilowatt hours, like the whole nine yards. Right. But the really the thing you need to be the most concerned about is amperage. Wattage means nothing in this case. It's all about amperage. So then you would you know want to know, well, okay, I have all these devices running. Let's just say it's 12 amps, right? If you're running all that on one 15 amp circuit, which is generally what most people are working with, one 15 amp circuit, it's a little much. Because you have what's called the 80% rule where you don't want to be pushing you know, more than 80% of that circuit's capacity, especially with a grow, because it's running all the fucking time, right? So, um, so the, the kilowatt goes right in to the receptacle. Yeah. And then you can, like, plug, because like, I'm, I'm assuming this guy had, like, a big, like, power strip connected yeah, to yeah. this one yeah, yeah. outlet, one, right? One power strip so, running off the bottom outlet. And then you can plug the power strip into the kilowatt, and yep. then everything else into the power strip, and then you'll be able to tell how much wattage or amperage you're trying to pull from that that wall, Correct. right? Correct. All right, that's that's awesome. That's a great tool. That's mm -hmm. a I mean, so it's thirty bucks at Harbor Freight, and you could save yourself a fucking house fire. Yeah. Now, what else what? could I look for? Like, I mean, you said smell, right? Like. Mm -hmm. There's going to be like a burning smell, obviously, because well, it's going to be, get hot. Be, before that happens, even without a device like this, you can feel the plug on the wall. And if it feels warm to the uh, touch, it's you're pushing it. Not the device, but the plug. Like, yep, right at you, the wall. Uh, right, or you feel that, that power strip, right? Or you feel the, the end of the power strip going into the receptacle. You feel that. And like you the, can, if, gotcha, the rubber part of the, yep. of the plug okay at the end though where the where it's getting yeah. its power from and mm -hmm. if it feels warm at all get rid of it like, gotcha to do something else like you sh you should you should be able to put your hand on that and not feel any warmth at all it should just be room temperature okay if you f if it feels warmer than room temperature it's too much power and and you're in, you know eventually something's gonna melt you know and uh, yeah. I see it all the time with like timers, right? So I, it sucks because these timers all say like 1800 watts. Like it, I, I fucking promise you, if you push 1800 watts through one of those timers, even the best ones, they're going to fucking melt eventually. That's just too much. Um, yeah, those cheap, like what's on, what's off timers. E no, even the digital <laughs> ones I use, like, you know, yeah, they, yeah. Say he they say heavy duty, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like, no. Um, a thousand watts, like max, is all I would push through one of those things. Mm. And that, and again, that's why I talk about lighting controllers on, on why they're so important. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, you know, no, no, some of those like cheap timers have two outlets. Yeah, and that's and a fucking two receptacles, two light receptacles and, at and least. Yeah, it's dangerous uh, for the grower community to have right. two outlets on a timer. All right, so go check your all your plugs if you use a power strip. Now, when I, I went out and like bought a power strip, you know, like at, at first I found one just laying around the house. Mm -hmm. And then I thought to myself, you know what, if I'm going to be using power strips and, and extension cords, like it might be worth just buying new ones. So I went out and I bought like this shop power strip. You know what I mean? Like it's the kind that you can like, uh, like it'll, it'll last through um like a at least a, a several kiloton nuclear explosion it'll it'll be fine after uh nice. you know just a little little blast but um the thing's a beast you know like you could it's waterproof it's it's all that stuff and um 
it's probably worth getting one of those. Yeah, that's another thing. If you're gonna right. use like power strips, Big power strip. Look, every grower I run is there's something on a power strip. Okay. Yeah. The thing is, is you're just gonna know how much power you're putting into. I mean, that's the same thing. If you look at those, like the max rating of those will tell you like, you know, 15 amps, 1800 watts or whatever. But like, if I promise you, if you push 15 amps and 1800 watt through any power strip for that amount of time, it's usually not a not a good thing. It's all about load distribution. And here's the thing. When you're setting yeah. up a grow in a bedroom, you're generally working off one circuit. And in my experience, at least up here in the Northeast, 99% of that time, that one circuit is a 15 amp circuit. For some reason, when they build these homes, they they don't like putting in 20 amp circuits. I don't know why. They, uh, they don't like, th they don't think anyone's going to be trying to like push well, look, that much we, power through one even a fucking space heater or an air conditioner should probably be on a 20 amp circuit you know yeah well the thing is right if you're running a device that draws uh, let's just say 12 amps of power okay, okay. continuous continuously like most people undersize their air conditioners so the thing never shuts off right and you got yeah. it running you got it running on that 15 amp circuit at 12 amps you're already at the 80 percent, right and you're just pushing that power all the fucking time so if you're pushing that same power on a 20 amp circuit, the wire's thicker, it can handle that current under load much easier than pushing the smaller gauge wire, you know. You can feel the wiring, like you can go to your panel, right? And you can actually feel the breakers. And you can feel if they're getting hot. It's the same principle there. If they're getting gotcha. hot, you're you're doing something wrong. So all right, just try let's... to try to distribute that load. I mean, if you have to, fucking drill a hole in the wall and run an extension cord from the other room, just to get like some of your accessories, oh. like your fans and shit. Um, that was um, I re I remember you know walking through this issue with you when when I was having problems because of the same thing, fifteen amp breaker. That's all I had to work with, you know. Yeah. And uh, if you're trying to you know, run anything more than just a basic grow setup. I think you're going to, I don't know, what's what, probably like you could get a, you could power a full four by four on one breaker. I, I imagine yeah, 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 yeah. anything when, more than that, you're probably going to need to like think once about you your get electricity. To like a four by eight or five by 10, you can't run that all on one breaker. Yeah. You just can't like not, a, not, not unless, all right. Let me rephrase that. If you just have two lights and like two 480, you know, quantum boards and an exhaust fan and maybe, yeah, you're, you're really pushing it there because the two quantum boards are going to use close to five amps by themselves, like 4.8 amps, I think, or yeah. something like that. So combine the two of those with, you know, your exhaust fan, maybe some, you know, circulation fans. Uh, let's say you're running auto pots and you have a, re a pump recirculating, right? Uh, then you go in and you turn on the lights when you go in and like people don't think like all this shit adds up. And um, there's another thing you could do. Some people, I've had this question actually since a lot of questions since I posted that that video. Um, well, how do I know how much power is drawing on my circuit, right? And as far as I know, the only way you can do that is put a clamp meter on the wire going to the breaker. And that's not something that your average joke should be doing unless you, you know how to work with electricity. You can call an electrician and they can't charge you more than like $100 to do that. Just you explain gotcha. to them and say, look, the I just want to know how much power is, is being run on this circuit. So um, they can and tell you in two seconds with a clamp meter. You don't get that with the kilowatt because there could be more than one receptacle on the circuit. Right? Correct. And it's like, all right. I mean, and... Like my house, fucking old, like hundred year old, used to be knob and tube wiring sort of place. Thank you very much. And um, so you have no idea like what is on what circuit at all. Like it's just like no. Yeah, I mean, I I've come into fucking in the kitchen and as well as like the bathroom light and just plus the one like receptacle in the top back bedroom on this one circuit like and it's labeled as such just like huh my house is the same way huh? <laughs> yeah a lot of old houses are i mean like it was common back in the day to have your uh basement lights be on your kitchen circuit like there was just stupid shit like that like that's done all what the mine time. are so my whole grow setup is like on the same circuit as my kitchen 
These are the things that I run into all the time, and I when that I tell actually, people like you don't have enough power, and they're like, "Wait, what do you mean? I have two hundred amp service," and I'm like, "Yeah, you have enough power coming into your house, plenty of power, but you don't have enough power going to this room where you want to mm -hmm. set up this fucking twelve plant grow. I'm sorry, you don't." And that did, I can't tell you how much work I've lost just on that alone, because like they're like, oh well, can I just do this or can I just do that? And yeah, you can just do that, but I'm not gonna put my fucking name on it. Yeah, right. They, they so somebody else. Will. If like, like you said, you have enough power going into the house, it's just not like distributed throughout the house properly to receive the load that you're about to to put through it. You know, you gotta. It's all about load distribution, as you said. I, I it is, and, and the thing is, um, is grow equipment, especially like if you're, let's say you're growing autos, right? And you're running those lights 20 hours a day minimum, or even 18.6, like a regular bed cycle for photos. You're pushing high amperage through wiring close to 24 hours a day. You have to think about that. Like, that's heat, that's resistance, that's shit. So I oversize everything. When I when it comes to, yeah. to to grow wiring because you're putting it under fucking stress, you know. Just now, if you don't want to like hire an electrician or burn your house down, let's say both options are a no go for you. I mean, yeah. You obviously don't want to burn your house down, but you don't know anyone who's an electrician who's canner friendly. You yourself can't do it. You're like me, a fucking pretard when it comes to electrical anything. And you just, you know, you're just like, ah, I just want to grow plants, but I, I don't want to put myself and my family in danger. Here is what I could have done, okay, in my situation, an old house with plenty of power going to it, just not distributed properly. Let's say uh, I would have been able to somehow move my washing machine and drying machine into, let's say I just... Took them out of the house, like say fuck them. Put them, put them in the in the garage for now. Typically, okay, and not in all cases, but at least in in my case, and I know that the electrician I talked to said in most cases, the circuit that's powering your washer and dryer are usually way more than fifteen amps. Am I not? Am am I correct well, in saying that? Yes and no. It all depends. So if you have a gas dryer, no, because the mm -hmm. gas dryer, most of the power is coming okay, from the gas. True. So um, maybe maybe then your dryers, refrigerator. Yeah. Just get and, rid of get rid of your refrigerator. Yeah, just you don't know, who same, the fuck needs same food. principle. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 just, my point. My point yeah. was like you can get rid of appliances in in and power a grow that way. Like your you know your your kitchen circuit is typically the one that's overpowered, and it, or your washer dryer circuit. It's it's like maybe both. So go take a sure. look and. There yeah. are plenty of can of friendly electricians out there, even in red states. You just got to talk are. around, you know, and uh, the, there's people out there that will do the work. So um, that's the, one of the, the, the first thing I will look at, right, when somebody wants to grow. Let's go to the panel. Let's see what's going on, right? And I take a look and I say, all right, uh, this fucking panel's full. Um, you need more power. There's only a couple of options here. You can get like mini breakers, which I don't like. They just scare me. They're like, you can get breakers that take up like half the space, so you could actually add more shit to the to the panel itself. I don't like them. They're, that's an option though. So usually in that case, I'll tell people they have to get a sub panel, and they're like, "Whoa, like I just want to grow some plants." Like, yeah. hey, I I get it, bud, but <laughs> you know, now, I mean, like we're talking, and let's say. Let's say you're just just want to have a two by four in a spare bedroom. You're good. Like hundred watt speaking, light, two hundred forty yeah. watt light, couple fans, may, maybe even power a dehumidifier on that same circuit. Like I think you're gonna be fine. Yeah, generally speaking, and, and like, here's the up, thing: and the reason like, why so this guy had such an issue is because he did the work himself. Okay. If you have a if you have a modern home, right? and you have modern wiring, the breaker is going to do its job by popping if you overload the circuit. Yeah, right? gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Generally speaking, right? I mean, not in every fucking case. There are faulty breakers that don't pop. It happens, right? Um, so 
just you know spend the thirty dollars on the kilowatt device right or whatever and yeah, at don't... least get an idea of how much power you're pulling for your grow yeah. and um keep in mind if you're you know the dehumidifier or air conditioner they take up a shitload of power to start and then they usually well not usually they always you know come down a little down, bit yeah it's always that first initial when yeah when the um the compressor kicks on uh mm-hmm. sometimes like i'll even see like the the lights downstairs just dim slightly yeah ever so slightly but then they then normal. they go right back and they don't they don't flicker or anything and yeah the mm-hmm. electrician said that's normal it's like, it normal just no it's normal if, if they flicker that's when you got to start to like think a little bit about you know so yeah you know I flicker think... and that means you, that means that you're they're struggling to get power and they're struggling to get power because it's being drawn to something else um so yeah definitely uh just keep that shit in mind and like look i got a lot of messages with people like man i'm scared like you scared the shit out of me with that video that wasn't my intent it was i mean it wasn't it wasn't like i just want to make people aware yeah you know, just just yeah, have some self-awareness because look be... if fucking fire happens dude you're setting the movement back it's, like that's yeah, ammunition right. a fucking uh, a representative will use to say see this is yeah. why we shouldn't allow this home why growth. home grow needs to be outlawed like it's like, it's as only a, as gonna, a grower yeah, yeah this is a lot. basic level of responsibility like this is something you need to know to make sure that yourself and your grow and your family and your house are safe this is like yeah. base level stuff people know your kill shit a, kill a watt don't kill yourself your friends your neighbors your pets and your family and okay. and look um there's plenty of youtube videos out there from qualified electricians um shout out to um there's a guy on youtube that i know has really good information he goes by i think it's electrician U, um just the letter u a um, lot of good informational videos about theory um i've sent a lot of people his his videos the thing is i'm hesitant to really um teach people about electric work even though i you know to me it's it's easy because it's just it really is just kind of color coded it's right there right for you but the problem is is that people oftentimes don't understand like the appropriate size wire and stuff that they might need or whatever and that's where people go wrong like the theory of wiring up a receptacle is easy um you know wiring a circuit it's it's fairly easy the theory of doing it but if you don't understand you know how much power you're drawing and size your wire and your breaker appropriately that's where you run into issues and that's what happened with, with this fucking numb nuts he actually rocket brained it right he's like oh i'll put a 20 amp in because that's better than a 15 amp yeah it it is it, but yeah, then like, the breaker doesn't do its job and break exactly and that's exactly. that's defeating the fail safe mechanism that yeah. like keep keeps you safe and but uh, no I, I i i get it man it's I, I told him you know he needed a 20 amp circuit so he bought 15 amp wiring a 15 amp receptacle and a 20 amp breaker wow. to save a few bucks like the 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 diff, the cost difference between 14 gauge wiring and 12 gauge wiring isn't that much and honestly, the 15 amp receptacle and the 20 amp receptacle, that wasn't even his major issue. It was the fact that he was running like a shitload of stuff on one circuit rather than having, you know, two circuits. You know, if he would uh, have just grabbed a couple extension cords, yeah, I did. did the load a little throughout like, the house. I mean, extension, like I've done it myself. It's not ideal, but it's better than look, doing what he was doing. Uh, extension cords are fine. People right like electro electricians will snub their nose at it and they'll tell you it's a fire hazard. And you know, it's it is and yeah. it isn't. Like if you're overloading them, yeah. Um and like generally powering speaking, one thing off of one extension cord, like uh, that's what they're made to do. I would I mean I would think it's just as safe as any other, you know. Yes and no. Well, they're you just rated, have to aren't they? They are. You have to get like they'll tell yeah. you how many amps they can handle. And you generally want the shortest distance possible. You know, you don't want to like have a big long cord coiled up. Um, you know, the device will draw more power too if it's on a long mm-hmm. too, a cord that's too long. Like, mm-hmm. let's just say it's a 500 watt light, it's probably going to 
draw like 510, maybe 515, because it has to draw more power to get it to the get all that power to the device. So. You gotta gotta share the load. <laughs> yep, share oh, that oh, load. We got ohm grower. Shout out ohm grower. What's up? Yeah. It's a good good show title there. <laughs> share the load. It's uh. I've been sharing my load for years. I know what, exactly what I'm doing. You know, grow rooms and porn stars alike. You know, you gotta gotta share the load. <laughs> Cheat the look on G3's face is fucking priceless. <laughs> She's hogging it all. <laughs> oh man. So, um I had a couple couple people asking asking in the um in the Discord, which by the way, guys, if you're not in the Discord, please hop on in. Ask any one so of us for the there. links or yeah, uh, you guys. You can yeah. grab it right on the website, cultivationconversation.com. There's a Discord tab. Click that shit, it'll bring you right to Discord. Nice. Yeah, it's 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 free for everyone. Like that's that's a resource we're not charging for at all. Like it's just it's fun, informative community, and it's fucking awesome. We got like over two hundred people tam in there now. Ever meet. Oh my uh, god, yeah, so much yeah. talent. Growers from all over the world of all types who know literally everything you would need to know. Encyclopedic mm -hmm. knowledge of grow and, and grow related info. And you know the shit I like so cool. much in there? Like, so we each have our own thread ask G3, ask Captain, ask Monster. And there's times where people will ask a question in one of those threads and somebody else will chime in to help. That's the shit that's like I fucking cool. That. Yeah. No, and that's, I agree 100%. And, like, I was thinking about that today, how just, like, you know, I think the the culture that we have over there is just so cool, man. People people are responsive, and people are, like, willing to share literally everything. And, like, not not hold your hand, necessarily, but, like, if you ask poignant and, and well-informed questions, like, you're going to you're going to get answers like, and people yeah, are going to great troubleshooting. Yeah, it's really yeah, cool. Awesome. So and lots of ball breaking. Yeah. Right. <laughs> lots of ball breaking. Yeah. Show up with your, like, why does my, my, my humidifier does not set to proper humidity. Like what, what, what does this mean? No, hey, we you laugh, but he, he ended up on an Island. <laughs> Wait, what? Who, who, who's on an Island? You were talking about the dude from Office Space. Was that it? Was that your impression from Mar uh, Mario? Oh, Office yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh -huh. I, I, I was told that uh, Stapler. Yeah, he, you're right. He did. He did. He was the only one. <laughs> ah, great movie, man. Fucking awesome movie. I love that Mike, movie. Mike Judge. One of the Jennifer best. Jennifer Aniston in her prime. Come on. Mm. I, I love me some that, Jeff Aniston. I mean, she had a lot of flair too on her. She did have a lot of flair <laughs> on her on her uniform. But um, so yeah. Anyway, the people in the Discord were asking me um about like the stretch, okay, which is a weird like specific phase of of your plant's life when it like doubles maybe sometimes triples in size and usually it's like right after the flowering phase is initiated okay it's uh in a in a more like general botany sense it's called bolting you might have heard that term being used with other plants like like lettuce or broccoli if you grow that kind of stuff um actually you don't want your lettuce to bolt or your broccoli it's it's interesting but like when a plant bolts it means it just like it grows very tall and then like tries to like reproduce um i think the you know, growing tall is is in order to like you know get more sunlight to i think um then the male plants will be taller usually to drop the pollen but that's beside the point your plant grows tall as fuck when you initiate flower <laughs> to most put strains it in, do i mean i've had some terms. strains that don't stretch much at all but most of them do most usually i always tell people count on double sometimes yeah. more. Oh, man i hold count my on breath double. hold my I breath during that stretch like the ones that are on the 
they don't stretch very much side of things are like they double in size. At least from what I found, you're, you're not going to find any that don't at least double. No, I've had plenty that don't. Really? Yes. Yeah, like, for instance, some mass medical stuff I run, not much stretch at all. That's yeah. that's weird. That's really weird. Like, honestly, because I, you know, I, I'm sure it is very much genetic. I do feel like, at least typically, the indicas or the broadleaf varietals tend to stretch less than yep. the sativas. A fair the statement. Narrow leaf varietals. Yeah, I mean, generally they're all going to double in size. That's what I just tell people to count. Okay. Double. So like count when you on double. When you when you're trying to figure out like when should I flip thing if you're growing photos, you know, figure out what your what you want the max height to be like before your lights burning the fucking things right. Because even I ran into some troubles lately with bleach dipping my fucking the tips of my colas if they get mm. too close to the light. So, um count on just count on that and then flip them at the appropriate time you know so yeah like my couple of my last cycles got i did have some plants that got too tall they could like literally grew almost into the lights because hmm. i just got behind on shit and shit happens i had a rough couple months so um yeah in that case so i and then i've seen people that like i've come into grows right and the plants are already like eight inches away from the light and they haven't flipped yet right <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that's what I did it, with my first plant. Yeah, it's normal. <laughs> it, it happens. That's that's a normal first grow type of thing. You just have to cut them back and then, yeah, you know, yeah. wait, wait a couple of weeks for them to recover and then flip. You right, can still, you can, they're still fine. You, but... can, you could prune them literally, like cut branches yeah, and yeah, yeah, prune yeah, them way back. Cut, yeah, cut them, prune them super back, crop give, them, give them at least two yeah, weeks you, to recover. You could do an old, good old super cropping of that's only going to get you not like that, though. But that's oh, only going to, like, <laughs> spread the plant out if it's already huge, you know? Like, it's, I don't know. Yeah, if it's if it's super, super tall, I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do besides cutting it back. You can super crop them and then set up a, a, a trellis net. I've done that, too, for people. Like, mm -hmm. um, But the usually I just, it's way easier and, and much less time-consuming to just fucking cut them back and uh wait two weeks for them to recover mm. I've, I've had to do it myself i've you know i've run into fucking like you know i just know that there's just no way no yeah like this isn't so... gonna work i feel like the trellis <laughs> net the would, trellis... Get, would at least would protect your yield a whole lot better than like if you if you like super cropped it and then put it a trellis net and like basically scrog the rest of the plant mm -hmm. no it can you, be done but then it gets to a point your though, yield it gets to a point though where you can only spread it out so far, right? And right, then, I suppose like, that's true. you know, if, if if like if you're only this tall away from the light, like, how far can you bend those branches out to get them level enough, right? So that right. You, you, without you can grow. stressing mm -hmm. the plant without, so badly, without snapping the fucking branch. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the all part of the the stretch is like your plant's gonna go from like bendy kind of gum it's like a gumby plant you know what i mean you can like you can you can bend it almost take those branches and bend them like this and it's not going to snap right because they're so flexible if, if like nice and Pretty green dependent. pliable but you yeah typically you, may, you know i might be exaggerating a little bit but like they go from flexible to non-flexible like by the end of the stretch by the time the plant is done bolting that's that's mm -hmm. one of the ways you're able to tell it's done stretching is it, it it's the every branch gets like solid you know it mm -hmm. wants to start to support the weight of flowers growing on it that kind of thing but i did want a question that has to do with that kind of mm -hmm. um do you guys happen to know if you're messing around with a plant and like I guess training or or things like that is it better to do it when the plant has just been watered and is completely saturated and like full of water or is it better to do it right before it gets watered when it has the least amount of water in it i've always liked to fuck with my plants like that when they're watered you know but i mean they're always watered with auto pots so mm -hmm. um generally speaking like if i'm going to do any type of stress to the plant if i'm going to foliar feed um, like a IPM or anything, 
um, I want to make sure that they're hydrated first. I don't want them like trying to drink that IPM solution, you know, because plants yeah, will, gotcha. they'll drink more. Like if you, if you take a bone dry plant, right, the medium's dry and you mm -hmm. spray it, it's going to want to drink that through its leaves basically mm -hmm. um, more than it would if it was hydrated. Right. I'm just wondering if you try and like, do I have more of an opportunity of snapping a branch if it's well hydrated versus not? I'm not sure when, about like, that. Training? That's a good question, actually. Yeah. I'd not have sure. to like I have to let it. If plant anybody dry happens and... to know that, let me know. Yeah, I'd have to let it plant I'm, I really dry. I don't know. Some, uh, experimentation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you know, at the very beginning of stretch, like, and because I and I did want to back up just a tad and and say like with autos, okay, like. It's a little challenging to know like when the stretch is going to happen because it's like you didn't initiate any flowering on your own. Like you don't know when the plant is like, like it, it says to itself, all right, it's time. It's time to grow up and become a big, tall, mature plant and start putting on flowers. Like it just kind of fucking does it, you know, but you, you grow, you know, enough you tend to notice patterns and and certain things you can look out for with autos like i mean i always tend to think of the stretch with my autos as weeks four to six with the plants so that's day days 28 to 42 put it yeah, in, uh, in terms there. of days mm -hmm. i expect to see pre-flowers around day like 21 ish usually so and like yeah, you, yeah, and then we start seeing actual real flowers by like twenty eight. So it's things you can do to to mitigate stretch too. That's great. I I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I wanted to get into a little bit about that. So yes, do tell. Yeah, please. What so, would what would you be able to do? So popping and twisting. Like if you take the branch, I wish I had something here, but like, um, I don't know. Use this fucking edible wrapper here. Yes, I have edible wrappers on my. Fucking wait, desk. so you wait, like licking and pinching? No, no, you horny prick. No, nope, <laughs> not, not that. Were um, we talking about that? So pop, popping, and we weren't talking about that. Was that giving pre-show? Your, giving your plant a wet willy. So basically, if you no, if I think that branch, was on the show. I'm this pretty is, sure. If, it, <laughs> if this is your branch, right? It was pre-show. Grab, <laughs> grab it from from two spots, and you can just kind of twist. Right, and then you'd move up a little bit, and you go the other way, right, and you uh, that will definitely slow. But you have to do that to every fucking branch, obviously, right? So it's a little time consuming. Um, silica helps with the stretch a little bit, right? High amounts of silica. Are you talking um, about that like Kyle Cushman uh, chiropractic technique? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess Somewhat. he's probably he's probably the founder of it. But yeah, um, Cushman's a pretty insightful guy some people he rubs some people the wrong way but i i like his vibe he's just a you know he's very well spoken and some people take it as kind of condescending but i don't i don't see it that, that way as all well. he's a little bit old school but like he yeah. also has kept up with kind of a lot of the new stuff too but no i i and i got that technique from watching him okay and yeah, like it's a little bit of like super cropping every branch almost. Mm -hmm. You and go up like, the branch like two or three times each branch, and uh, yeah, that'll definitely just, slow slow the stretch down quite a bit. Pinch it, but like and and doing that literally like maybe the third day of flower. Okay, I I I, I thought it was probably good timing for it because the stretch doesn't start like as soon as flower starts. No. It's it's maybe like, well, I mean, 10, in theory, I guess in. I guess it is like it's getting prepped to do it. So I mean, it's, uh, it's like the but, chicken of the egg type of thing. When's it start? But like, whatever, yeah, you're right. Like it's you not know what start I mean. Like right away. Like as when like in photo terms, like when like there's no pistols on the plant, mm -hmm. right? It like it it you you flip your lights and then like maybe two three days later you see the first pistol. Okay, that's like. Imagine that day for an auto. That's, I mean, shit, for some of my autos, I see the first pistol day like 18, even day like 16, okay? So imagine that, 
in photo terms, you're like two, three days into flower by day 16 with some of these autos. It's, it's crazy. It, but like, uh, so like, people yeah. People that the, flip the, it two weeks, don't they? What, photos? Oh, for yeah. some photos, yeah. Some photo yeah. Yeah, yeah. will do you, that. Like, yeah, usually like I'll have my clones in the room in two weeks and then flip, sometimes three. Because mm -hmm. you, you're just trying to fill out your canopy. You know, mm -hmm. so um, when the canopy's full, you flip. That's how I roll. Like I want it nice and full. I want a branch coming out that first layer. Um, you can also um, to help mit mitigate stretch. And this sounds crazy to, to hear, but people don't even believe me. But if you have your nighttime temps like as warm or even warmer as your daytime temps, that'll actually help mitigate stretch a lot too. Your nighttime temps okay. as warm as your daytime. I'm yeah, trying I wonder to like. Why. I don't know make, why I just that would be that makes sense in my head because like Something I can I read understand in a, in a book a long time ago and it, I've I've mm. um, used it and it works so really yeah. I'm, that's fascinating to me. Yeah. Now, I know, just if you're talking about lights, like things you can do to to mitigate stretch. Um, I I, I at least have heard of like the that red light like a seven i think it's 730 nanometers that wavelength like it's it's far red it's called used oh, in a far lot red of, is like 760 770 i believe but um, 730 is in a lot of lights know, though right it is it is but the, get, the if you're talking about like the emerson effect that's usually um, not that that's usually not in your typical board you have to buy separate yeah uh, no i actually i'm actually talking about like the the shadow response like that like by the the red wavelength of light is what like a plant would see if it's down underneath a canopy of other plants because like when you like sunlight goes through a bunch of green leaves it's reflecting the green and the red is going through, right? So it's like you're you're taking green out of the spectrum of the plants underneath on the bottom of the canopy, right? Mm -hmm. And then when they bolt, it's in their like it's in their nature to to grow tall. And if they're if they detect an abundance of red light in the spectrum, they think they're in the shade, and it's programmed in them to grow taller to outcompete the other plants to get more sun, more light, to better photo photosynthesize, to have a better chance of procreating. Like, so there's this, this mechanism in your plants that it's like, it's responding to red light too. And there is a way to mitigate stretch by omitting that red from your spectrum, if possible, <laughs> in the beginning stages of stretch, okay? And then, adding it as like flowering phase continues like once they're done stretching the other thing you could do is just fucking make sure you have enough light believe it or not if you you know you don't have enough exactly. light they'll, they'll stretch even more they just stretch for that fucking light try to get that light as quickly as they can i see it's a pretty That's... lanky plant sometimes you know you look at them you're like they're like man look at this thing it's like seven feet tall I'm like yeah but like i think you might get an ounce out of it if you're lucky <laughs> Well, that so. is very true. Like in the way that, you know, we preach, you know, top of the tent, 100% <laughs> sort of thing to allow your plant to grow up to the light, you can conversely bring the light down very close to the plant when you initiate flowering and give it a lot of light and it won't stretch as much because it'll have nowhere to go. Yeah, but, I mean, you got to be careful. Know, that, you can, you know, you, you can that, burn them, but yeah, 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 for sure. And like your plant will still stretch, believe you me. And you're gonna have to raise your light then, but it can help with like, I mean, shit. Some of these plants, like the photo periods I just chopped for, you know, for the eight plants, they were like, like I said, four and a half feet tall. And when I when I started flowering, they were one and a half feet tall. So you're talking about a, a, a three-time stretch 
you know? Yeah, some some shit. Three X. And it took me a little bit by surprise. And um, you know, I used I used those LST clips. You ever use those? I haven't. I've wanted to try them because they sound kind of intriguing. I know um I know Biff has them on their website. Yeah, yeah, that's where yeah. I got them actually. Yeah. I got a He's Bud I got, Trainer. I love them. Mm. For, especially for early for like training in in veg. I think it's amazing. Yeah, use code but CC10. You got to make sure they don't <laughs> Yep. You can use code CC10 at Bud Trainer. Um So oh, I mean but, honestly are they the same thing? Like they're like just 3D printed little plastic clips. No, these that... are not 3D printed. These are like these are beautiful quality really? yeah i'll have to look because i'll like, show you them next time i see and i see you i'll bring some the ones i got were like they're these little 3d print printed plastic things that like have a little notch on both ends mm -hmm. and it's like a, a predetermined like curve okay let's say it's like i don't know mm -hmm. 30 degrees of a curve something like that yep and you gotta like clip the bottom of the branch in and then fold the top of the branch in and then push the thing under and clip it into the thing and it like honestly it was kind of if you waited too long to apply those things mm -hmm. you would snap your branches a hundred percent well yeah yeah it's all about timing with those and and on the other side of it if you wait too long to remove them your branches will start growing into them, and then you have a really hard time getting them off. I didn't so, remove them. That's funny you say that. I didn't remove them. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah the all branch about I've timing seen with those things. I've seen branches grow like around them, like they just yeah. surround it. Like, <laughs> dude, you ever <laughs> see? Imagine. You ever see like um like a, a tree grow into a fence? Yeah. It's yeah, there's like one that like grew through a bicycle. A tree. Yeah, like, you ever see weird shit like that where like, yeah. you're like, oh my god, like the fucking fence is like part of the tree. Like that's so weird. Like how does nature be like that? But it do. Nature's fucking know. lit. <laughs> but like it's it's just the same thing with plants. Like they literally like fused with the bud the the LST clip. And like I at some point like couldn't get the the clip off. A couple of them broke because the branches like became too um you know too thick mm -hmm. too, too yeah much i move too much mine girth. like every <laughs> week to two weeks depending on how old the plant is so i'll yeah, just move it up smart. that same branch that's way I smarter moving it out of mine that uses um fishing line and fishing weights he like weighs the branches down to that is very interesting out. to me too I've yeah. seen that too. I like yeah. Green Garden Wire too. I'm a big fan of it. It's classic. It's yeah. solid. Does what you need it to it, do. It works. You can put it, branches it, right where you need them. You're just spreading it out a little bit, kind of thing, mm -hmm. to to allow more light to come. I mean, that's that's why I use those LST clips too. I mean, I I did find them kind of useful. Um, and it I did... love I love mine. I think they're really useful, but it's all about timing. Yeah. Yeah, and but it mine, yeah, mine, my plants definitely outgrew those clips, so I sh should have removed them. Should have removed them. What can you do? But um, learn. It's a learning yeah, experience. You live and learn. You live and learn. Oh, I'm but, supposed to move these. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, now I got a bunch of empty tents. And I got the like post harvest blues, you know what I mean? Like it's not Aww. not 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 blues, but like I just it feels it feels yeah. so vacant up there. Like I just yeah. I'm used it's to so much going on. Yeah. Yeah. So So what's on the docket for the next run? What's coming up in the tent? Do you know? Well, now I have I have the tangy tibiguanas, which are mm -hmm. I mean they're putting on a lot of weight already. It's almost only like day 50 ish. If that, um, and they are like, I can already feel them getting heavy. Uh, very much like a lot of, a lot of, uh, pistol production going on. You know what I mean? They're, 
some some strains you just see a lot of those oh, just a lot of white hairs that's usually good these you got going two how's two. the flaccid one doing <laughs> old flaccid <laughs> old flaccid's doing great doing great she's uh you know just as happy and flaccid as she's always been man but she's actually the the heavier of the two um, yeah that's what i was saying like i've seen that in a couple of plants and the ones that uh that uh that have been like that usually perform better for some fucking reason it's like you know they're like divas i don't know what it is yeah yeah a sure. little bit i mean but it, there's nothing that she's like complaining about necessarily i think that's just her yeah. just her nature but like i said she's putting on a, a lot of flower and it's frosty and um i'll be getting a lot of a lot of those like fruity tangy kind of uh smells coming through now very nice it reminds me a lot of mango smile at least like the, the smells that i'm getting so far it's kind of skunky it's kind of fruity and that's i mean that's a great thing you know yeah. you know that's, that's a, very good so uh, i'm pleased so far and then i got the four i was able to finally give them the, their space that they they need at this point because man the four autos were like mid stretch like we were talking about and despite everything i had tried to do every technique employed to like mitigate stretch it's like it's still gonna happen plants do that it's how they be so i gave them their space and i got the four autos in the big tent now right and um no it's actually great great and um they're looking awesome so i got the what sour stomper orlando's magic um I can't even no oh, blue sp blue sprayed shoes remix and Mephisto's wedding all hanging out in my in my big tent. Um, so I, at at this point, monster, what I have to do is hook up like so the tangy tip iguanas. I've been lazy with them, like I said, and I got to hook them up to the to an auto pot system. So I still have I still have the reservoir from a photo period grow up there right and the tube coming out hooked up to the system what i'd love to do is use that same reservoir because it's still full with a little bit of water just just dehumidifier and tap water mixed up uh, nothing special but i'd love to just because i have them in auto pot pots and i just need to put them in the trays and hook up a reservoir and boom i should be good right yeah all right. Yeah, you can. I've I've ran auto plot reses like two hundred feet before. Nice, nice. Yeah, all right, like, all right. so, so if I if I turn the nozzle off from the reservoir and I like I don't know drain whatever is in the hose, let that just kind of empty, and then take shop vac. It is my best yeah, if you have shop. one because there's always water just right. like yeah, it'll leak it's, something. It's, especially like in the three eighths tubing, like so when it tees, you know what I'm saying? It tees yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll like never get all that water out of there. It's a, it's a bitch. You could also like if you have extra tubing, you could tee it and leave that line going to the other tent and gotcha. run a new, a new line to the existing mm. tent. Interesting. Or I could well, walk I you through just building it. it on. Yeah. <laughs> You I mean, it's I, like those games you do you play those in like elementary school where you had to like turn the taps on and off to make sure the maze went the right way. Auto pots, yeah, like bring you back yeah. childhood well, memories. See, for somebody like me, that would never work because I'm running salts, right? And I'm running newts in my reservoir. But for somebody like you who's just running water, yeah, you could you could literally run the whole operation off that one reservoir. Just tee it off. Exactly. And, oh yeah. If yeah. you have a big Do you enough get res. any like film or anything in your res? Or does it stay uh, just like clean? I mean, there was a little bit of like I I'm not sure where maybe there was a little bit of water I poured in that had some fish shit or something mixed in somewhere along the line because yeah, there was a little bit of film. 
Well, even Look regular water will get funky. Biofilm. Yeah. 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 A little bit of biofilm. A little bit yeah. of biofilm. But again, if I had, uh, I just need to get that microbe life, that that uh, microbe life plus, right? Photosynthesis plus. Man, that Photo stuff plus. Is that stuff. Wicked. That stuff. Ooh. Uh, just just grab some of that. But um, yeah, no, I, it it's a little bit of film, but nothing to worry about. But like you said, monster, I could just run everything off of one reservoir. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That's All right, I then mean, that's I, my plan. And in your situation where you're growing organically and you're just literally just giving the plants water from the reservoir. I see no reason why you couldn't tee it all off and have whatever, as many tents as you want running off that one reservoir. Obviously, the more plants you have, you know, you'll have to be running up there with fucking <laughs> buck water. Um, but I'd yeah. still like to see if we could get you on some sort of like, they make those like retractable hoses with like a splitter on a sink somewhere, um, with, you know, rather than carrying up buckets of water. Um, you might be, you know, because, yeah. dude, believe me, I, I've been there, right? So there's days where, like, you know, you're like, yeah, I'll just, I'll water them tomorrow. Fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not you lugging. The reservoir I'm not lug too low. I'm not, yeah, I'm not lugging 15 gallons of water up the stairs. I've been there, like, you know what I mean? Back in the day with, you know, fucking grows in an attic and shit. So I, I feel the pain, man. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hey, auto pots make it make it way less painful, way less painful. And now, one of the cool things that I've been I've been realizing about the whole auto pot thing, letting them have basically an unlimited amount of water, mm -hmm. is that you can give them way more top dressing than you typically would. I mean, like I, you can like pile it on. Oh yeah, because the because the top staying dry. Is that what you yeah, mean? It, it's not be, well because I'm also like continuously like if I'm top dressing, usually I'm adding a little bit of water on to, on the top dressing too. It's because they they have a constant supply of water to take up. Like it's like we were talking about different roots almost. There's there's drinking roots down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. and there's feeding roots up at the top, mm -hmm. and the plant can like the, it doesn't always take up food but it always takes up water okay now if if your food is mixed in with the water it will always take up the nutrients too do you know what i mean by that like yeah. if you're using yeah. salt and it's in the water every oh, time nice. it drinks it's yeah. going to also eat mm -hmm. however in this kind of system that I'm using, it like it it's able to differentiate. So like Monster, you were talking about where like before you will foliar or you foiler spray, you oh always want to feed your plant or make sure it's watered first, mm -hmm. so it's not trying to drink from the leaves. It's that kind of same thing. Like it's not going to be drinking from the feeder roots up at the top. It's going to be eating from those. And it can always drink as much as it wants from the bottom. And like, it kind of knows when it's full in a sense, like the plant just like with organics, at least it just, if you give it a buffet and an all you can drink buffet as well, that's the important part. It also needs to have free refills at the buffet. You can't have a buffet without your free refills. Generally that's speaking, foolish. that's not how the buffets work. <laughs> it's, that's where but, they make their fucking money. <laughs> but, At least the ones but, around here. What I'm doing, I'm Come doing now. an all-you-can-drink, all-you-can-eat buffet as well for my plants. And that, that lets them, like, sit there for a few minutes and be like, you know what? Oh, I'm fucking full right now. I don't need to eat any more of that. I'll just sit here with my uh, with my Coca Cola, and do the like you know I'm full little dance and try to like make a little extra room in my stomach, that kind of thing. Go up for thirds and fourths. But you're just giving them the choice. <laughs> you, I I find that my plants are able to eat way more, a, and also differentiate between. 
like they don't burn either. Like if I give them, so like they are eating way more. So like I can just scoop on two, three times as much top dressing as I was typically using. You know what I mean? Craft mm -hmm. blend like that much. I mean, not maybe not that much, but like you can use a lot of stuff and compost and all different kinds of stuff and just kind of like pile it on, man. The plant will take up what it wants. And if if anything is going to be burned, it's going to be your wallet from like using too much, <laughs> using too much shit. Like... I, I've come I across know. organic growers that have burned their plants. You can you can do I, it. My, yeah, well, but most mine of them burned. aren't giving them an all you can drink buffet as well. Yeah, that's true. My, so that's, in that's my, pots, mine, that's what I'm mine, saying. Mine have too much nitrogen. I know they have too much nitrogen. The soil's too hot. I mixed it too hot from the beginning. It was my mistake. I absolutely know that was my mistake. However, they don't. They're not burned like anywhere. They just they have curly, very dark leaves. Yeah, no burning. Like, leaves pushing out of the buds like weird shit <laughs> i know it's some like weird, yeah, weird stuff yeah a little yeah, bit sure. yeah because there's can... way too much nitrogen there but they didn't burn now so is this with your auto pot plants g3 yes okay but they, when they hosts didn't burn, aren't listening but they, <laughs> <laughs> they they did take up a little bit too much they did maybe, but they didn't nitrogen. burn so yes i'm agreeing with you with that 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 they didn't burn they didn't however, burn, but however, they, they can tend to, like, I don't they know. They can, so my, I feel, I'm take up too much. Is that maybe, I don't know, were you also top watering? I only, your... no, I only, I um dried back and top dressed and watered that in for a week. Like, all of their waterings for a week and then turned the system back on. That was the only time I did yeah. any top dressing at all. Interesting. Now, uh, what I yeah. want to say, I because I, I think it all ties in, Monster with you know people you know that have burned plants with organics. I think it's about the drybacks. It's about not having access to free refills at certain <laughs> times of their buffet. I love that, I love that description. <laughs> it's <laughs> they get they get pissed off. Like I would too. Be like, what the hell is this place? gonna bring me all the low main and short ribs i can ask for but you won't bring me a goddamn coke when i need one like okay so can <laughs> in auto pots are you saying that you can just skip the dry back completely yes all the time you don't need yes a hundred percent you it's like that's and and my method too of even hand watering is i don't dry back at all i typically leave my pots like 90% saturated. That's what I, I, I want to keep them at that level all the time. Whether I'm adding two cups of water that day or two gallons of water that day, depending on life stage and how like much has evaporated. I'm typically watering every day. I add some water because I want to keep my, my pots at 90% saturation. In order to not, like when you dry back in organics, you are also, it's the same concept as with salts. When there's less moisture in the pot for the plant to take up the, like it's, it's using those water roots down at the bottom too, to drink. And when you're drying back, you're also making that, that water down there for those drinking roots like more salty or more saturated yeah. with nutrients in cocoa or in peat or whatever it's, it doesn't matter yeah that, so, that the in the rhizosphere the the ec is going to get higher it's like the yeah when when there's you know less water in the glass it's going to be more salty you know what i mean by that i don't think that was a perfect yeah. analogy but like if you um, have uh if you mix well, my issue started after so i top dressed right so it was and and i mean there was too much nitrogen in the beginning and then my top dressing exacerbated it makes sense so 
I feel like the auto pots kept them from burning, but it's also organic. So like, is Gaia Green work in the same way that it needs to be broken down by microbes, or is it I don't know. available? Gaia Green. Mr. Canuck, not that he's listening. Like, uh, like, is it? I I have to. I'd have to find that out. I would think in organics, it would be a lot more um, able to handle it. I guess because it would it it would be able to handle the dryback because it would need to be broken down eventually. There's but, always going to be a percentage of those nutrients G three that have already been broken down. Very true. I would, I would think, and like even in a slow release kind of setting, you're going to have some of those nutrients that are going to be plant available. And when you dry the medium back, you're making like a less overall moisture content of your medium, so it's a higher overall nutrient content of whatever moisture your plant is then taking up yeah you know I, what I, mean? I see what you're saying so if like you're at a 40 percent soil moisture level i mean just numbers are probably all wrong but yeah if your medium's 40 percent saturated maybe the then the the strength of the, the the nutrients that they're taking up from the roots there are like 60 percent stronger than they would be if the soil was fully saturated it's that kind of thing. There. Less yeah. moisture, more salt, or more nu nutrient that the plant is then forced to take up at the same time. So I incorporate drybacks with my autopots, but I do it for different reasons. So uh, I've talked about it before. I run secondary resins for like my organic teas and stuff like that. So I want them to be able to take that and absorb it at a quicker rate. So usually the night before, I'll shut the system off. And then in the morning, I'll turn it on, but with the secondary res and flood the trays with my, you know, microbe tea. That's how I roll. So you'll like, you give them a couple extra hours before giving them. Yeah. Um, like I, I just, I don't want that microbe tea sitting in the pot for, for too long. Right. Cause it's kind of, kind of gum shit up in there. Mm. Um, so they'll, if they're pl if the plants are drier, they're going to absorb that much quicker. You know what I mean? So I'll I'll turn the system off like the night before, and then in the morning after the tea's ready, I'll you know pour it in, turn the system back on with the secondary res, let the plants drink that up, and then when I see the trays have run dry, turn the secondary res off, turn the main one back on, and the let them let them drink. Hmm. All you can drink? All you can drink, vicious. <laughs> I do incorporate a dry back every now and then. Like, I'll shut it off, you know, um, let them go dry for a night, turn it back on. Dry backs are important. They do help. But uh, I know Manny would disagree with me. We've talked about it before. Um, and, you know, and he's right. Like, the plant will do completely fine without a dry back. But there are some benefits to it. Yeah, I, I, I have been using them. Don't you know, Ben? I mean, you know. You, like, yes, that's yeah. if you want I just, to do I that. Hate, I hate that fucking can. terminology, crop steering. Like, mm -hmm. fucking sounds so stupid. Like, triggers me, you know, like other words. So Yeah, see, um, and I, I'm just more of the mindset of, like, I just want to give them everything they need and let them do their thing without any encumbrance from my part, my end. Yeah, like, I don't yeah. want to inhibit them in any way. Like, cause naturally, gotcha. if just they have everything they need, they're gonna do fucking great. Right. Like, so just quit need... fucking with it. Yeah. So stop, like, <laughs> stop depriving them of the things that they need, which gotcha. is all Listen, you it can makes drink. Sense, though. It totally it's just like, all makes sense. You can drink everybody was like, do a dry back and then you can feed from the top. And I'm like, okay. I mean, it makes sense because if they don't have any water at the bottom, you want them to drink from the top because that's where the new nutrients are. Like, I understand. Well, like, I, it's all I think, evolving. In an autopod system, I think that it doesn't make sense because if you're top watering, right, that top layer of the soil is dry anyway. So just fucking Mine has pour, actually pour... never completely dried out. Really? Mm-hmm. Interesting. From, it was dry. 
it was like dry an inch and a half probably down before I did the like top watering part. But since I top watered, it has been Major like wet. damp. It probably like wick, slightly moist. Wick, wicking up better now. Yeah. I guess. Mm, you just had to like jump start it a little bit. Yeah. To get it to get it flowing up there. It's interesting. Yeah. Like Again, I we have that. to mention this every time because uh, I feel don't. like if we don't top water <laughs> in auto pots if you're running salts. Yes. Yeah. Only Correct. organics. Yeah. Only if you want to know organic. why, just just message me. Just don't. <laughs> just you'll trust kill your us. plants. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> you, now you can do a flush. Like if you run into problems, right, and you you fuck things up, and you need to flush, you can take them out of the tray and flush them. But just make sure when you flush, like you flush, you're not just heavily watering them. Because if you just pour from the top and you don't really like work that water through and get it out, you're gonna have some fucking issues. You're just flooding the the rhizosphere with a bunch of built up salts mm -hmm. and you're going to force the plant to take up way more salt in each yeah. gulp of water that it, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's and just it, it, like we it, were it talking about. Salty about it. It'll definitely it'll get, get salty. real salty. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> no, you, yeah. Wow. Love that's it. uh that's a that's a dad joke and a half right there. Oh, I'm fucking well loaded done. with dad jokes. This well dad done. has plenty of them. Oh yeah. Um, no, it's uh, you know, it's it's a funny thing. I think auto pots are a little bit of like they enable you to do a lot of different techniques that are actually really beneficial. I mean, not just easy for me, but like it's just the whole like theory of the the buffet you know you give them all they they need and you're you step back yeah man i mean shit i've been blown away i've like this summer how much the fucking plants drank in the greenhouse like i'd go through 60 gallon reses in like three or four days like what the fuck they get I've thirsty been... man yeah all them short ribs make you work up an appetite mm. they sure do <laughs> if they're not refilling your glass you get i mean <laughs> I'd get salty. Shit. Let alone my, my plants. Like, I expect some goddamn service around here. But it's savage. <laughs> no, it's uh uh where are we at time wise? I don't even have uh, we're, any we're pushing two hours. Ready, but, well, I did want to get into uh we have we have a bunch of, of new Patreons that I want to mention, man. So yeah, I got them right maybe here. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Nice. So, uh, big shout out. See, here's the thing. Some of these people use their real name, and I don't know if they want their name said. Um, on... Give a give an initial. So um, I'm just gonna give a big shout out to Ryan. Uh, okay. Thank you, hey, thank Ryan. you for your, thank your pledge, Ryan. You. I think um, that 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 fucking doxes Ryan, right? I mean, I oh yeah, there's there's <laughs> there's only like what ten Ryans on the planet, so. They're coming um, for you. They're coming for you, Ryan. They're coming for you. Just fucking tell them monsters said it was okay. <laughs> um, shout out to uh, Big Red Weed. Thank you for your support, man. Really appreciate Yay, it. Thank um, you. This other person has has their full name on Patreon, so I'm just going to say shout out to Jeffrey. Appreciate your support, brother. Um, thank you, Jeffrey. And, and, and uh, to Ryan and Jeffrey, if you want a full shout out with your whole name, just let me know. Be glad to do that. Appreciate you know, your support. Uh, shout out to Utility Room Gardener. Um, good dude. Been following me for a while. We've had a lot of conversations over the, over the years. I'm glad he jumped on the Patreon train. We appreciate your support, brother. Um, shout out to Quasimodo. <laughs> cool friggin' name. Quasimodo. Uh, thank Get you for the your hunch support. Back. Hunchback. Hunchback yeah. supporting us, man. Yeah. And then 2x2 um, two two Tony. I'm not sure if he was mentioned last week or not. I love the name two oh, by yeah, two Tony. Two it's by fucking two that's a, it's a really cool oh, fucking tag name. Hey Tony, shout, shout out to two by two Tony. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. Hey Tony, if you don't like it, I'm gonna hit you with this two by two. <laughs> <laughs> Break your kneecaps. <laughs> How do you turn into Russian? Like you just went from, a... from New York. <laughs> I don't to know. Russia. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> 
No one ever yeah. said I was a professional voice actor over here. I just I don't know. You're pretty good. You I and G three. I could see you guys, you know, doing some fucking pro professional voice reads. But I, I can do the Mr. Canuck on command. Just anytime, any place. If you want it, I got it. Right here. It's <laughs> about all I can do though. Just no, it's not on demand. We've tried on demand and it doesn't work. It just has to come out spontaneously. <laughs> you're right. You're we right. we tried to get you to do it on demand at the fucking in Boston and you were like, uh, no guys. Just... What are you talking about? Yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. do anything. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's uh all at, all uh out of love, of course. All out of love, of course. Oh dude. But, um... Mr. Canuck's a cool dude. Fucking, hot. I mean, yeah, he he's good. Oh, yeah, he's man. gotten, he's gotten some hate. I don't, know. I don't know. I don't really follow like all the bullshit, so I don't know why. But he seems like a cool dude, you know. He's been doing it a long time, making dude. a lot of content, pushing out fucking. He's still growing. Like he's one of the originators of the like super cocoa method. I mean, at least the first I ever saw it, and uh, you know, doing a lot of just top dressing and and tap water kind of grow. Like yeah. that's. I'm the of the opinion that everybody should be using cocoa instead of peat for their soil. I'd love to see like what I think people could be blown away by what really could happen with their grows. I I, you know? I mean I agree, dude. I agree. When when I incorporated cocoa into my peat based medium, like you know Stonington blend, and then I added just a little. As like a top layer, you can even use Coco Loco, right? Different product, Fox Farm product. So if you do a, a Stonington, uh, Stonington blend bottom, Coco Loco top, actually you'll you'll see a extremely fast seedling growth, which is something we saw someone you know talking about that in the Discord in the last couple of days, right? Yeah, and yeah. Like, like like look at this seedling. It's like why why or why is this seedling not as big as this seedling right and then it turned it turned out that like well the one that was bigger was in coco it's just you know, why um, why is that it's an area substrate it's lighter it's able to push through the roots are able to push through easier plus in my opinion i i think that uh, a lot of soils can stunt autos in the beginning even just a little bit so it is the, a rough, know, pretty rough thing to break like, through. Uh, like when, yeah, it, so, when you get it soil, it has sometimes has like you know pieces of bark and like rocks and shit mm -hmm. in it too. You know, yeah, it can and be in, it can in be cocoa. Tough. There's, there's like roots. no newts right there, right? They got to kind of go searching for newts and water. Mm -hmm. And in soil, everything they need's right there. They don't need to work that hard. They'll grow when they feel like it. Yeah. Yep, yeah, bigger roots, bigger uh, fruits. The trick, you know, it makes sense too. Like, right, if it's got to search for food, the roots are going to get a little bit bigger. Um, should grow out a little bit better. I mean, I mean, sense. I'm I'm biased because I'm a cocoa guy, but like, just from like a scientific standpoint, right? From like, all right, so peat when it's a hundred percent saturated, the oxygen level of it is much lower, but cocoa at a hundred percent saturation still can maintain oxygen. So. Like to me, that just it just to, for our, as far as growing medium goes, to me just makes more sense. Like I just don't understand. You know, I'm not knocking anybody that uses peat, but in my like, I'm just in my fucking brain, right? I'm like, I don't understand why you would use peat when cocoa's there. You know? I mean, I I guess like if I'm playing devil's advocate, it is beneficial in some settings to not have to water as frequently. This is true. That's one of, you know, one of this the advantages of peat is like it retains water. I don't know. It, it like you don't have to baby it as much. This is true, but the more wet dry cycles you can get in a plant's life cycle is, you know, where the it's more at. you like, can force feed it nutrients during mm -hmm. that that even plant organic lifestyle. or synthetic. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. so, I agree. I agree. I, you know, I, I, when I experimented with the cocoa mixed in with like my medium, and I still do that, by the way, like, I, and that's a very common as well. layering mm -hmm. technique for me. I will put the Stonington blend at the bottom and the Coco Loco at the top. Um, you know, and Coco Loco is cocoa with earthworm castings and some 
Other, I, I or something yeah, it, right? I think it has yeah. a little bit of mico in it, but like, it's it's just heavy on the cocoa. You know, it has mm. a light mix of. Earth I'm in love with too. the cocoa. <laughs> but the, no, no joke. The seedlings love that shit, um, and I I didn't see like as fast seedling growth as I do now before I started using it. So the thing I've noticed about seedlings, like personally. <laughs> Now, this is going to kind of blow you away. So I actually start most of my seedlings in peat. Um, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> that would get really confusing. No. Yeah. No, no, why no. is that? So um, cocoa requires a lot of cow bag, right? Huh. And um, early on in the beginning, the plant can't really utilize that much cow mag. So it's kind of like one of those things, you know, um, that like I don't want to push my little tiny seedling with a shitload of cow mag early on in, in its life stage. So um, and plus I just I have like three or four bales of pro mix. You know, I went on a pro mix run for a while. I ran pro mix for a couple gotcha. of years. So gotcha. So yeah. you just because you have a shit ton of it. No, but it. No, I I probably. I mean it. It's you know. It's uh. It's it's pretty effective for seedlings. Like even the, yeah. a pro mix HP is loaded with perlite and stuff. And it, there's some vermiculite in there as well. So it's pretty airy, yeah. fluffy, um, yeah. but, but like a straight, a straight peat, I probably wouldn't recommend that. It's a little dense. No. Yeah. You can't, I mean, straight. I mean, you could do straight cocoa, but yeah, yeah. like that's, that's one of the, you know, one of the reasons when I talk about, like, I like to keep my peat based organic, growing medium at like around 90 percent saturation that's also because i use um a, a, a lot of perlite a lot of aeration whether it's perlite whether it's pumice whether it's extra rice holes you know like just i aerate the shit out of my soil because that's one you know if in too much peat if it's oversaturated it can get anaerobic and that's no good. You like it like it doesn't retain oxygen as well as cocoa, like you said. So an oversaturated peat based medium does run the risk of becoming anaerobic. Um and that's like if that happens, it starts it starts to smell like rotten eggs a little bit in, in your grow room. Yeah, you could smell it when you walk in, it's just like <laughs> funky. A little funky, yeah, yeah. 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 You can get root rot in that setting. Like, um, it, it's just, yeah, not not good. But, like, that's one of the reasons why you're going to want to, like, make sure you're, you're aerating your medium properly. It's one of the things we talk about a lot here, you know, whether, whether you use auto pots or not. Even if you're not letting your plants butt chug doing the old traditional hand watering you still want to make sure your medium is aer aerated so um yeah just word to the wise word to the wise guys word to your mother <laughs> and, and word to your mother but uh i don't know you got any other other words for the, for the kind people out there in podcast land tonight mm, uh, we're pushing a while here i think that's pretty much it i think we're running on uh I don't know if fumes here. We're about two hours into the show. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Usually when it when it starts to happen, that's when I start to think about making my escape. Yeah. But uh <laughs> So I, I just want to thank everybody for the support we've been getting. It's kind of uh I never imagined the show would actually be where it's at today. I really didn't. Yeah. Um it's awesome to see, Amen. you know, the community and in, in Discord and uh honestly, like everybody over there is just fucking cool. You know, yeah. and um that no nobody's too sensitive or or a fucking snowflake um you know we break each other's balls help each other out lift each other up it's a great community man i i love it so um God, i know this of... daunting to a lot of people um especially like when you pop in a pop in discord there's a lot of rooms and shit going on in there um but it's really just watch a youtube video on it it's really not that hard you, you know. go in and then just go in, click on the, the left side where it says general. Mm -hmm. 
If you just hang out right there, you're going to see like, you're going to see a lot of familiar faces. You're going to see a lot of the, most of where the, uh, the action is. You get a sense of like where you are. You get your bearings, you know? Yeah. Um, And, uh, if you're a Patreon supporter, reach out to one of the mods after you pop in. Uh, we spend, we have a yeah, Patreon yeah. only and, room. Um, a lot of shit. Um, we're gonna in start there as well. to like ask you guys for <laughs> well, Monster may have um a list of some of the Patreon addresses, right? But as we speak, my wife, great wife she is, is making those those care packages for all you kind Patreon supporters out there mm-hmm. with those those tester beans and so um, I have. We want uh, to get them out to you. So we need your addresses. Is is my point? Yeah. Um. So so yeah. I don't know. Maybe we can set up like a post on Patreon for that. You know, we'll just go through Patreon. Um. So keep an eye out, guys. Make uh. You know, check your email stuff like that. I'll, I'm gonna try to contact y'all. Yeah. I have. I'll give you the addresses I have from the last drop that we we cool. sent out. And then you can work your way from there. Right on. Yeah, I think I, there might even be like I, I think there's a way to have it ask quick, people quick, for their address when yeah. they sign up. Quick to rant. have Can we talk about how fucking shitty the Patreon app is? <laughs> it is pretty shit. It, like people don't even realize, right? So like it is. I can't even it's like tough. look at a list of all the Patreons in the app. There's just no way. I can only look at like the current ones, like the ones that just came on. So I have to go into the web. I have to actually get on a fucking PC, right? To to wow. to how twenty twenty ten, dude. It's like I'm who's gassing. who's got the fucking so. So somebody at Jeff asked me a question the other day. He's like, "Hey, is so and so a Patreon member?" I'm like, "I don't know." I, don't know. So, I mean, I can't keep up with everything. So yeah, yeah. I'm like, the name the name looks familiar. Um, so yeah. Let, you know, until I say otherwise, he's a Patreon member. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, say no, you can't join the Patreon room because I can't fucking tell if you're a Patreon or not. Like, that's fucking stupid. So, Patreon, if you're listening to this, can you just produce? And it it, it, was, it was the same experience on on uh, Android. Uh, it wasn't much better. I mean, it's a little better on iPhone, honestly. But like, can you get your shit together? Is there a way your like I together your shit together? You know you know what's crazy is there are people out there for like seven or eight dollars that will turn any website into an app. And I'm not even joking you. It's really not that hard to code a website into an app. All they have to do is just that, just so I could get all the options on the website, like on mobile. I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, it is. It, so it, Patreon, it you're charging but... us eight percent a month. <laughs> fucking get your shit together. <laughs> it is, but. Regardless, we still <coughs> still warms our heart every time we get an email from Patreon saying that another one of you guys signed up. Yeah, um, we love you guys. You know, yeah. whatever whatever tier you can swing, you know, we we appreciate it all. And even money if expensive. <laughs> even if that's money is too expensive for you, like we get it. It like we really do. Um, there's other ways to support the show. We always say. Tell a friend. Leave a review. Um, Use our affiliate codes. You know, run around in the streets naked, screaming, Listen to Cultivation Conversation! Please! Somebody! (laughs) No, don't do that. Don't do that at all. Um, But definitely, like, tell, you know, tell tell your friends. Tell other growers. Um, That's... That's what we really like, guys. Like an organic kind of grower to grower kind of spreading the virus that is this show. A virus, please. <laughs> We're just making a little, just make it a little bit more contagious for all the <laughs> the growers out there. That's what I'm saying. For every person who listens now, I want you to go infect two people with <laughs> the show. <laughs> but. <laughs> no uh thank you all so much honestly like thank you like monsta said we could have never envisioned where we are now it's purely because of your support all your love i mean really the the grower love that we get is amazing and um 
yeah, just just thank you all so much. So come join us, join the conversation in Discord, support the show, tell a friend, all of that stuff, and um, uh, most importantly, guys. Talk to you later.